Good evening. So we are Facebook living. Hang on, sorry, I was in a bad camera position. Um, so welcome. It's Moira here from Intermedicology, and I just wanted to have a quick chat tonight about something that you may not be aware of, and it's a very interesting thing in the sense that symptom-wise, it presents a lot like vaginal candidiasis, and you can understand then. Um, on clinical face value how you may then go approaching it like candida and not necessarily getting the results. So hello everybody who are out there, pop your hellos down below so I know who's watching and certainly ask some questions as we go along. Um, hope everybody's had a good week. Thursday nights are usually where you see my eyes half closed because I've been in clinic all day <laughs> so uh, I do apologise so we'll keep it quick um, and not hang around too much because you were probably all winding down from the end of the week. So uh, as I was saying, hi, hi Sarah, um, we're going to have a little chat about cytolytic vaginosis or vaginitis. So I don't know who's heard of that before apart from obviously getting my invite to the live. Have you heard about this particular condition? Um, and what do you think that actually means? So when we break it down in terms of cytolytic, it suggests that there's actually some cell lysis going on, so cell damaging going on, and that obviously occurs from whatever's going on in that environment. And we've talked before, yeah, I know, I hadn't either until a few years ago, Leanne. Um, and so we've talked before about what general microbial colony we should have in the vagina, and that is one that is lactobacilli dominant. And, and usually lactobacilli are protective for our vaginal environment in the sense that they are in charge of producing lactic acid and hydrogen peroxide, which maintain the pH within the vagina. And that pH maintenance generally keeps other microbes in check and tends to be involved in some of the immune system um, activity that goes on in the vagina. And then the lactobacilli themselves are in charge of producing not only metabolites for the local environment, but also bacter um, bacteriosins. So they have quite specific immune activity against quite specific pathogens. So why I'm going on about lactobacilli is that in cytolytic vaginosis, the issue is that you have too many lactobacilli. And the lactobacilli producing acid and lactic acid in an environment that perhaps can only you know, handle so much of that, we start actually seeing cellular damage. So the symptoms of cytolytic vaginosis are very similar to candida because you seem to get a vaginal discharge that is uh, whitish most of the time. There is some uh, clinical reference to it can be watery, I guess then we're looking more of it being a BV picture. Um, but whitish and there are the associated symptoms as well of burning um, and itch. Um, so that is very candida-like as well. And like candida, if you were to do a vaginal pH test on the discharge, it would be what we would consider to be in range. So the normal vaginal pH should sit somewhere between 3.8 and 4.5. And um, in cytolytic vaginosis, the, the general consensus is the pH sits there between 4 um, and 4.5. And it does that interestingly as well with candida. So... This particular condition is very tricky and I've talked before about one of the things that goes on in Australia with um, candida is there's over-the-counter prescription. And over-the-counter prescription, high Claudette, relies on um, obviously someone reporting symptoms to the pharmacist or a lot of the time it's just going into the pharmacy and saying, I have thrush, I would like a treatment, um, and then being given the the medication, whether that's oral or an inserted pessary or tablet to treat that. Now, one of the things that happens with cytolytic vaginosis where we have um, those lactobacilli is the treatment doesn't necessarily work. I've talked before that sometimes the lactobacilli, well, most of the time the lactobacilli are resistant to those type of antimicrobials, which is great when we're trying to cheat, um, treat a pathogen. So the medication is used and the symptoms don't necessarily go away. 
The other thing that can happen, and this is also can be reported clinically as having a client that says, oh, I have thrush at this certain point in my cycle and then it disappears when I get my period, which again is another really common clinical presentation for both thrush but also cytolytic vaginosis. So cytolytic vaginosis can actually um, present more in the luteal phase, so when there's a lot of glycogen storage available because of what estrogen has done just before that around ovulation. And so these symptoms would be more prominent in the second half of the cycle and then they tend to, with the um, alkaline um, discharge that is menstruation, actually resolve um, through menstruation and feel better at the beginning of the cycle again as you start the follicular phase. So that's a very common pattern for cytolytic vaginosis as well. Um, as you go and look at information for cytolytic vaginosis, surprisingly there isn't a lot. <laughs> Um, and there's not net really any specific amazing treatment uh, medically for it either. And certainly medically, again, because things like thrush are usually a lot of the time clinically diagnosed on symptoms, it's also medically quite missed. When we are looking at the correct way to diagnose these things, which initially when we're looking at the common triad of things like bacterial vaginosis and candida and also um, trichomoniasis, that is a really simple microscopic investigation. And if we were, or if people were actually getting that done every time they had a vaginal discharge, um, cytolytic vaginosis would actually be easier to pick up because the discharge which is white um, and very similar to candida, would, once you swab that on a microscope slide, you should be able to actually see the candida um, yeast and, and identify that. And so if there is microscopy and none of those things is picked up, it's not BV, it's not trichomoniasis, it's not um, candida, then the diagnosis, certainly of cytolytic vaginosis, is a more common thing to actually arrive at. Okay, so that's a really important thing. I keep coming back to the fact that getting um, further testing done for these clients with a recurrent picture, a picture that doesn't respond to a treatment that should work, is really important. Okay, so you then have somebody possibly that is diagnosed with this cytolytic vaginosis. They've got too much lactobacilli. What does that mean? And, and how do you actually address that? You know, do you go in with strategies then that are lactobacilli killing and what does that look like? Or are you actually better at looking at why would the lactobacilli be so proliferative in the first place? Okay. And um, the medical treatment, as I was saying, is not amazing. It certainly seems to work for some people and their treatment is just alkalizing. So the um, standard treatment is to use a bicarbonate of soda douche. So using one to two um, teaspoons of that in a douche, which is around about a litre of water, and then doing that twice a week for two weeks, um, or using bicarbonate of soda actually as an inserted pessary. You know, so it's just purely alkalizing not necessarily addressing, they're just hoping to reset and re-establish. Um, there's also some suggestion that using um, antibiotics, so non, you know, things like amoxicillin, for example, might be used in this situation to again reset a microbial colony. Because, you know, the, the lactobacilli are there, which may also mean that none of those other things that keep the counterbalance are, are actually surviving in that space because of what the lactobacilli are doing. Okay, so that's the medical treatment. I will say that that is um, sometimes successful, certainly douching and alkalizing and bicarbonate of soda are fairly, you know, straightforward applications if you're using an aluminium-free bicarbonate of soda. The other thing to suggest or to look at in a holistic sense is what is making those lactobacilli thrive? And certainly things like glycogen expression, things like blood glucose dysregulation, um, all of those can contribute to that picture like they can contribute to candida as a picture. And the other really important thing, which is I think is a really great realm for holistic therapists to actually be successful in helping people with the recurrency of this issue, is um, estrogen and estrogen dominance. Because if there is really quite high levels of estrogen or estrogen um, 
metabolites, then there's the possibility that we have an upregulation of glycogen expression and we have an upregulation or, or a, an increase in the lactobacilli in that particular area. So I know for me, I haven't seen a lot of cytolytic vaginosis in clinic, and so it's there, but it's not one of the big, you know, two generally that I would see. Um, but in combination with using the douching, um, using things that are addressing estrogen metabolism and addressing that estrogen dominance picture tend to see more resolution long term. So for me, being in Queensland, I really like to use things like DIM um, to address, address that picture. I find that a really easy intervention. It's got other applications as well when we're looking at um, cervical lesions and things like that, and it's quite successful as well. So using DIM in that situation and also um, obviously addressing things like diet and making sure that estrogen clearance is, is good and that we're not getting that reabsorption in the bowel when we have the interaction of microbes in the bowel and estrogen metabolites flicking back into dominant estrogens and being back absorbed back into the body via um, that enterohepatic recycle that goes on. So you need to address, obviously, like we do with estrogen dominance from all those different angles, you know, looking at clearance via the bowel, looking at what the liver is doing to it, supporting those high, um, those pathways to so the sulfation, glutathionation, glucuronidation um, in phase 2 detoxification. So getting all of that on board and functioning appropriately and then then that should obviously support that environment as well to help regulate what goes on. Um, and then you can just use those really local alkalizing strategies in the vagina itself. All right, everybody's sort of sitting there watching. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Has anyone come across this in clinic? Has anyone... Um, oh, my dog just had something go on. Um, has anyone treated that? Has anyone got any thoughts on the estrogen connection or observed that or are there light bulbs going off for people going, oh my gosh, that chronic flush that's not responding, maybe that's a um, cytolytic vaginosis for that person? Oh, no, someone sent me a thumbs up um, because it is something we should be considering. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, in the sense that, you know, again, because there's not always that check back with a medical professional in, um, and not that we're not professional, but to that sort of access, you know, you certainly can't privately order a microscopy. Um, and so there needs to be some sort of co-management going on there with somebody that can do that. Okay, so keep that in mind when swabs come back neutral, um, that <laughs> listening and writing, great, um, that they come back neutral that this could be a diagnosis. The other thing, obviously, when things come back neutral is that there's nothing there and that's a normal physiological um, discharge. But in this case, the burn and the intensity of the itch is significant and significant enough that it presents like that candida picture. Okay? All right, any questions? If you've got a thumbs up and you've got a question, let me know. Otherwise, we'll start to wrap it up for tonight. Um, I do encourage you, as always, we've had a little bit of quietness on the page. I've been in a really busy writing zone, um, so I've not been posting as frequently, but it does not mean that you cannot post. So certainly use the page like you would any of the other practitioner forums. We just have a focus, obviously, on vaginal health, um, and so it's a safe space to be addressing that and asking questions, um, posting anything that you come across, and just really having a great discussion about this area that we really need to um, make sure people are aware of and can address well. Um, I had a meeting today, a beautiful meeting actually, with four very lovely doctors who are just so fed up with dealing with these issues, the chronic um, recurrent bacterial dysbiosis, um, the vaginal dysbiosis pictures, and they were very happy to hear that there was somebody that they could um, send people to to have some co-management and some support and very interested in probiotic therapies for that. Um, you know, because they, one of them was saying, look, you know, if I'm using the fluconazole for recurrent um, be, um, recurrent thrush, I'm using it in a, an off-the-book sort of way and using it for longer periods of time and I don't want to be doing that. So it's a great area to have some skill sets in for that reason. Okay. 
Everybody have a lovely evening. Thank you for watching and joining me. And as always, keep thinking about vaginas and um, ask any questions as you need to through the week. And I look forward to talking with you. Okay, everybody. And if you've got any ideas about future lives, I'm always open to them um, because sometimes my brain just can't think of what you know and what you don't know. Okay, and no stupid questions because there are no silly questions. They're all great questions. <laughs> thanks, Claudette. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks, Sarah. And everybody else that's watching who hasn't let me know that you're there, um, I'll see you on the page. Good night.